Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to install and also transfer your operating system from an existing SSD or hard disk drive to a brand new shiny NVMe based PCI Express drive. This one is the D1 Extreme, and we'll be doing it right after this. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be doing a data migration. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, migration. So basically, we're going to be copying our operating system in its entirety from one drive to another. Now, the drive we're transferring it to is this one. It's a Dravo D1 Extreme, and this is an M.2 based NVMe SSD. So this is on the PCI Express Times 4 bus, rated as being pretty decent speeds, around about 3000 megabits per second or megabytes per second for the read and about 1600 for the write or vice versa. We'll have a look in a minute on the computer. I always get these things wrong, but still, anyway. Uh, we're upgrading actually from a uh, BX500 SSD, which is around about a sort of 500 megabyte uh, transfer speed versus this. So this is gonna make things a lot quicker. It's also double the size, and this was a fantastic buy. I managed to pick this up yesterday on Amazon, and I think it's about 47 pounds. Again, we'll have a look on the computer in a minute just to double check the price, but for under 50 pounds for a 512 gigabyte drive, I think this is great value for money. Now, it's a lesser known brand, uh, Drevo or Drevo or whatever they're pronounced. Obviously, they're not one of the bigger players like your Crucials and all that kind of thing, uh, Kingston, etc., etc., Samsung, obviously. Um, so, it's going to be interesting to see how well this does. Now, one thing I did find of interest is the specification of this is actually quite good. It's also um, got backup 512, uh, 256 meg of DRAM on there as well as a buffer. But also, Drevo actually have their own software for doing migrations. So it's not like you're gonna buy a drive and then you're completely left on your own to try and work out how to get Windows onto the new drive. So what I thought I'd do is go through the installation process, go through the transfer process, do a quick speed test as well, just to see some comparisons and actually see if this drive was worth 50 pounds or thereabouts. So let's go to the computer and we'll have a look and see what we need to do. So first of all, a couple of uh, prerequisites for this job. Obviously, first of all, you are gonna need your drive. Also you're gonna need a five mil uh, wrench or socket for the actual uh, NVMe holder on the motherboard. Now you should find most motherboards have already got them installed already, but you may have yours in a tiny little bag left in your motherboard box. There's also a tiny, tiny little screw. So for that, I would recommend, if at all possible, get yourself a magnetic parts tray and put the screw actually in the tray to get it magnetized and also the screwdriver as well. So when you actually go to do the job, you find that the magnetic screw holds on quite nicely because the last thing you want to do is to lose this tiny little screw in your chassis. So that is pretty much it tools wise. So a small uh, crosshead screwdriver, ideally a magnet of some sort to magnetize the parts. Obviously the drive, a five mil wrench to put the bolt in or to remove the bolt if you need to move it. And obviously a motherboard that supports NVMe. So let's get a close up and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is shut down a computer and power everything off because we're going to need to remove the graphics card because that's going to be completely in the way. Now if there was a smaller uh, CPU cooler we could probably gain access to it straight away but unfortunately we've got this monster so we're going to have to take the graphics card out. So when the PC is powered down just unplug everything and remove the securing screws. Obviously if you're using onboard graphics then this isn't applicable to you because you should have plenty of access or if you're lucky enough to have a nice new shiny modern board that has got multiple NVMe ports, then again, that should make life a lot easier. So now we've got access to the NVMe slot, which is just under here. And you've got the various bolt settings there for different size drives. Now, fortunately, my board has already got the locating nut installed, but normally you'd have to install that. So literally, with your box wrench or your uh, socket wrench. So you'd use that and then just use it to tighten up the, uh, the nut. So once you've got that in place, you're then ready to get your NVMe drive. So this end, we've got the locating area or the M.2 section. And at this end is where we're gonna be locating the, uh, the screw to hold it all in place. So with the drive, you don't just push it in flat like this you actually have to put it into the slot on a slightly upward angle and then lower it down. So it goes in like that 
and then ends up flat. So unfortunately this is a really bad board to actually show you, but it is what it is. So put the finger into the M.2 slot and you should find that it should support the drive itself quite happily. Then what you can do is get your magnetic screwdriver with the little screw on the top and then you can attach the screw to hold the drive in place. Again, this uh, screw is tiny, so try and make sure that it's magnetized in some way to give you a, a fighting chance of it not disappearing. Now the screw itself is only for locating the drive, so it doesn't need to be super tight. Uh, literally almost hand tight so as soon as you feel it have any resistance on the screw stop because you're done and there we go that is our drive fully installed and ready to go so now we can reinstall the graphics card and then we return back to windows to copy our operating system how easy was that okay so we're back into windows now after uh, reinstalling the drive so first of all what we need to do is we need to initialize the drive so we'll right click on my computer or the start bar rather and go into disk management and straight away we get the initialized disk uh, notification so disk one and we'll put it as a GPT click OK and there we can see there is our unallocated disk 476.92 gigabytes so what we're going to be doing is transferring this C drive and all of this onto this disk here so we can close this down now, and now we can open our data migration tool. And this is the Dravo data migration tool. So there's our data migration tab. We've got a hardware information tab about the computer, all that kind of stuff. And we've got information about smart for the drive. So let's go to data migration and we'll choose a target disk. So now we've assigned the disk. Now what we should have done really is to uh, actually format the drive to give it a logical drive letter so that the software can recognize it. Now generally if you were installing Windows from a USB stick or from some kind of ISO, then that would have been okay. But in this particular case, because it's using the Windows subsystem, we need to give the device or the drive actually a letter. So let's go back into disk management and we'll create a new simple volume We'll make it the full size of the drive and we'll call it E and we'll do a quick format. So there we go, there's our new drive already formatted. So now we can close that, go into data migration. And now we should be able to choose another drive. So clearly Dravo data migration tool is uh, pretty much useless. So it's not actually detecting our new drive. So we are completely screwed in that regard. So let's go back to the old Macrium Reflect. So we'll quickly go to Macrium's website and we can download the free Macrium Reflect tool. Okay, so this is the Macrium Reflect software. Now this is a free edition for home and uh, commercial use, blah, blah, blah. So what we want to do now is we want to clone the drive. Now this what drive software is really powerful and it can be a little bit daunting, but it's not too bad at all. So what we want to do is we want to clone a disk. So that is our primary disk at the top here, our GP, GPT disk one. And you can tell by the size of it. So it's 223 gigabytes, it's our 240 gig SSD. And we want to clone that disk onto this disk here. So if we now click on tick box there and clone this disk and it asks you where you want to select or what disk you want it to go to so we will choose this one here so disk 1 to disk 2 and that's our 476 gig drive and we'll delete the existing partition and click next so it offers you up a schedule for the clone but uh, we don't want to we don't want to schedule it, so we can just click next. And it gives you a final 
thing of what's going to happen. So operation one of five, two of five, it's going to copy across all those partitions. So that is the main thing we want to do. So essentially, GPT disk one, 223.75 gigabytes going over to disk two, 476.94. And we're going to do an intelligent sector copy and we're going to verify as well. And we're going to do some SSD trim whilst we're at it. So click on finish and we can run this backup now. We don't want to save the backup. So just hit it. And it says that the warning the drive will be overwritten and that's fine. So we're going to put a tick there and click continue. So this shouldn't take too long. It's basically creating a volume snapshot and then it will transfer all the data across. Now it's only a, a smallish SSD to begin with and because it's going from SSD to a NVMe drive, the transfer speed should be uh, pretty quick. So we'll keep an eye on it and see how long it takes, but hopefully it won't be too long at all. So if this task normally, if you're using a large drive, like a one terabyte or two terabyte, especially mechanical drives, this can take forever. But uh, this actually isn't too bad at all. So we're at 3% already and we're only a couple of seconds in, maybe 30 seconds or so. So this shouldn't take too long at all, maybe uh, five or 10 minutes. We'll see what time is now, 15.46. We'll see how long it takes. Okay, so that's the drive clone. It took about 20 minutes all in all, um, yeah, uh, pretty much as expected. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into the uh, SSD benchmark. I'm gonna run a couple of benchmarks between the two and see what the comparisons are like. Now, obviously there is a slight overhead because Windows is running on one of the drives, but we'll, uh, we'll kind of take that into consideration. So first of all, we'll test the uh, the BX500 drive, see what that gets. Now in theory, that should get round about in the region of about 500 uh, megabytes per second, read write thereabouts. You know, the write speed at the moment, 476, which is probably around about what you'd expect. We've got a few overheads in the system, like I said, quite a few things running in the taskbar, as you can see. So it's looking, looking about right. Okay, so we've got a reboot, so let's go back into the uh, benchmark tool and see what it's like. It actually feels a little bit snappier already. Mm, that's better, but still a little bit slow on the read speed, which leads me to think I actually do need to do a reinstall of Windows. This computer has had multiple crashes, failures, reboots, uh, other things going on, so maybe it is time for a fresh install. But we'll see how the, uh, the test finishes. Okay, so that's done and dusted. What a palaver that has been. So, my final thoughts. Now, this potentially could be my fault. It could be the system's fault. It could be the drive's fault. I don't think it is. Uh, we've got the drive installed. It was pretty easy to do. The actual physical installation was a little bit fiddly, but um, nothing we couldn't overcome. And it went in quite easily. It was recognized in the BIOS, all that kind of stuff. So if you're doing that for a fresh install, I think that's probably the best way to go. Claiming the software with the uh, provided Dravo software was definitely a no-go. It wasn't having any of it. So then we tried the other piece of software, which was, I can't even remember what it was now, it's been so long ago since we started, Macrium, Macrium Reflex, we tried that, that was okay, that actually copied the drive fine, but then it bizarrely added another recovery partition in between the two partitions for the C and the unused space, so Windows being Windows can't actually combine two spaces if there's something in the middle of them physically on the graph, it's bizarre, I don't understand it. So tried to use another piece of software to get rid of it, disk part. This part actually wouldn't do it. So I ended up using the uh, IO My the partition tool. We went into that, deleted the recovery partition that it weirdly uh, copied. So got rid of that, resorted the drive, went back into Windows, tried to do some benchmarking on the drive and it failed every time, crashing out, device not ready, all that kind of stuff. So then I uninstalled the Macrium software, the IOME, i.e. whatever it is software, basically got rid of any pieces of software which you've just installed and got rid of some other junk as well while I was at it. Did a reboot and now it's actually passed through. So currently that is the drive specs that you can see on the system, which probably are popping up here or might even be in front of my face right now. So you can see the specs that we've got. The read and write times, um, not shabby by any means, but I don't think they're quite uh, 
PCIe Gen 3 times 4 speeds. Definitely not for the, uh, I think it was the, the read speed. The read speed is definitely lower than the quoted speeds that it should attain. Um, so we'll be looking into that. But at the moment it looks like it's performing like a, um, a two times PCIe device, which again isn't a bad thing. My other uh, drive, my silicon power drive in the other PC is running at pretty much those exact speeds. So um, whether it's a bit misleading of Dravo to list this as a, uh, a 4X device, when really it seems to be a 2X device, whether it's something to do with the actual controller on the card itself, who knows, but essentially for 47 pounds, I'm pretty happy with it. I couldn't have got the same capacity in an SSD very easily. Uh, there was a one or two around, um, a couple of refurbished drives from uh, Crucial, or was it Corsair? One of the two. Anyway, there were other options available, which we were discussing on our Discord server, which you're uh, welcome to join in the links below. And I'll see how it goes. At the moment, the drive seems good. It's fast, it's snappy, reboots are really quick. Uh, opening apps is really good as well. So it's all looking pretty good. So at the moment, although it doesn't rate what it says on the box, I'm still gonna give it a thumbs up. I'm happy with it. It fits the bill. It's nice and quick. It's really cheap and it seems to work, which is a good thing these days. So there we go. There's been a long way round of how to install a NVMe drive in your computer and transfer over the operating system. It's not been plain sailing by any means. And obviously if you're trying to do the same thing and you're getting problems or you've got any questions, feel free to put them down below or join our Discord server and you can ask the questions there. And there's a group of people who will be really helpful and will try and sort out your problems. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next video or on our Discord server. Thanks for watching.